At the Marshall Space Flight Center in Alabama, United Launch Alliance began pressurizing the upper stage of its brand new Vulcan rocket a few weeks back on the evening of March 29th, but then something went wrong with the higher stage of the Sin Towers. To his great credit, the CEO of ULA Tori Bruno was quick in acknowledging the incident on Twitter shortly after it occurred. Keeping you posted, during qual testing of Centaur 5 structural article at MSFC, the hardware experienced an anomaly, according to Bruno. If we take a closer look at Bruno's tweet, we can see that he is referring to the qualification testing procedure, which involves testing rocket engines in stages on the ground to evaluate how they would behave in low-light situations during flight. The Centaur stage was having issues. However, more questions remain regarding the catastrophe than there are answers more than a week later. Notably, Elon Musk, the CEO of SpaceX, has responded to this. So what exactly happened to the upper stage of ULA Vulcans and Towers? Will this delay the aircraft's initial test flight? Let's find out everything in today's episode of Meditech. The Vulcan rocket's primary engines have finally been delivered to United Launch Alliance. Blue Origin produced two BE-4 engines in the fall of 2022, and since then, the corporation has mounted these engines on the core stage of the Vulcan spacecraft and transported it, together with its Sintower upper stage, from its Alabama factory to the launch site. The pre-launch processing of this hardware is currently underway, and Vulcan will then go through a number of flight readiness verification tests. Procedure entails a number of tanking tests, and a wet dress rehearsal that ends with an engine firing to demonstrate flight readiness. We will set a launch date following successful completion of the flight readiness test, ULA spokesperson Jessica Wright announced. Unfortunately, it has just been confirmed by numerous sources that there was a significant explosion on that Wednesday evening at NASA's field center, where the company has a test stand, and that numerous first responders responded to the area. According to one source, their test item is obviously more than simply damaged, even if there were no injuries. A column of burning clear hydrogen surged up into a mushroom cloud that dwarfed the test stand. Video cameras run by Blue Origin, which is renovating a neighboring test stand, caught the abnormality. Blue Origin committed more than $100 million at NASA's old test stand 4670, which is close to the ULA launch pad, to conduct acceptance testing on the BE-4 and B-3 rocket engines. A Blue Beginning sources have verified that the anomaly caused a mushroom cloud to form. ULA then requested that Blue Origin remove the dangerous video footage from the company computers, and Blue Origin complied. The launch date for the much-anticipated heavy-lift Vulcan rocket's debut raises some doubts in light of the loss of the Centaur upper stage. ULA has claimed for a few years that it is awaiting the delivery of BE-4 engines from Blue Origin for rocket's first stage. The Centaur upper stage was still undergoing qualification testing at ULA, indicating that it was also a pacemaker for the new launch vehicle. The new version of this Centaur 5 upper tier features major upgrades despite being built on a heritage design. Previously, Bruno claimed that Centaur 5 would have two and a half times more energy than the Centaur upper stage ULA currently flies and could function for 40% longer in flight. Another unresolved issue is the precise location of the Centaur stage ULA testing in Alabama. Was it a stage designed to simulate flight in its entirety for a future mission? Or was it more of a prototype stage utilized for developmental testing that was potentially more prone to failure? ULA remained silent on the subject. ULA has publicly established a target date of May 4th for the Vulcan rocket's first launch. However, we noted last month that this date was already expected to move into the summer based on the company's internal plans, even before the Centaur incident happened. On Vulcan's agenda, the impact of the Centaur anomaly is still unknown and will fly when we believe it is safe to launch. We will not know the impact to the launch date until we learn more information from the investigation, ULA spokesperson Jessica Rye said this week. The principal client for the Certain One mission Astrobotic has been instructed by ULA to hold off on shipping its Peregrine lander to the launch location.
The lunar lander is still at the company's Pittsburgh facilities, waiting for the rocket manufacturer to give the all clear. After the incident, Bruno made a prediction on Twitter that the Centaur 5 upper stage, which is now in Florida and scheduled to be used on the Vulcan CERT-1 mission, was very unlikely to be affected. However, no decision can be made until ULA has finished looking into the mishap and has spoken with the U.S. Space Force, which will ultimately use the rocket for national security launches. The development of the Vulcan and Fly-2 certification missions must be finished by ULA before the end of the year. In doing so, the vehicle would be able to start launching Space Force payloads for national security. In 2023, ULA had hoped to fly its maiden mission for national security, but that now looks improbable. After all, the creation of spacecraft is a dangerous and occasionally explosive industry. Just a scratch. That quote from Elon Musk on Twitter about the ULA accident. In fact, it's not that bad compared to what Musk and SpaceX have gone through. Over the past 10 years, the business has launched more than 100 rockets in a quest to send visitors to Mars and the Moon. However, a few of those unmanned prototypes have caught fire. That demonstrates their attempt to carry out the uncommon action. The first significant explosion occurred in June 2015 on a cargo mission to the International Space Station. A Falcon 9 rocket carrying supplies for the ISS suffered a catastrophic failure and exploded shortly after launch. Given that it was SpaceX's maiden flight to the ISS and that the Falcon 9 rocket was one of the most technologically advanced rockets ever, the disaster dealt a serious blow to the firm. Despite the setback, the business immediately recovered and soon after started its launch operations. In the following event, which happened in September 2016, a Falcon 9 rocket that was intended to propel a satellite into space burst on the launch pad, destroying the satellite and seriously damaging the launch complex. The explosion occurred during a regular pre-launch test. The mishap was a significant setback for SpaceX and caused a delay in the company's launch schedule of many months. In reaction to the explosion, SpaceX carried out a careful investigation and made a number of adjustments to the rocket design and launch protocols to avoid similar occurrences in the future. A second explosion happened in December 2020 as the company's Starship prototype was being put through its paces. During a static fire test, which entails starting the rocket's engines while the rocket is stationary, the Starship, which is intended to carry people and cargo to the Moon and Mars, exploded. As the Starship is a crucial part of SpaceX's Mars mission, the mishap represented yet another setback for the company's plans to colonize Mars. However, despite the setback, SpaceX carried on pushing the limits of space exploration and made tremendous advancements in the creation of reusable rockets and spacecraft. NASA astronauts were sent to the International Space Station on the Crew Dragon spacecraft, and the successful test flights of the Starship show how committed SpaceX is to innovation and the advancement of space technology. Despite the setback caused by SpaceX's explosions, they are still determined to explore the last frontier. The firm overcame the setbacks and proceeded to make important contributions to the world of space exploration thanks to its tenacity and dedication to safety and innovation. SpaceX is devoted on making space travel more accessible and more inexpensive for everyone as it looks to the future, and the company's pioneering attitude will undoubtedly inspire future generations. ULA is hoped to accomplish the same. Well, hate to admit, but this pretty much wraps it up for today's episode. Hopefully you all enjoyed today's vid. Don't forget to share your ideas in the comment section below. We'd love to hear your input on this matter, and we'll be responding to a lot of your comments. Before we wrap up, it would mean the world to us if you all pounded the like and subscribe button. Our hearts are always full from your care, enthusiasm, and support. I guess it's farewells for now. Till the next video drop, you all take care.